Welcome to the Fantasy Thinker. I'm Jared Kodamich, and today we are going to be looking at another excerpt from um, a novel on reading the prose number 11. Today we're going to be looking at a uh, passage from Fugitive Prince, chapter 5. Um, this will be mild spoilers, very mild, uh, so it's taken out of context a little bit, so uh, you shouldn't have anything spoiled here if you have not caught up yet. Uh, with Fugitive Prince, which is the uh, fourth volume in The Wars of Light and Shadow by Janie Wirtz. And so I wanted to take another look at Janie Wirtz's writing because I'm completely impressed by it. And I, uh, I like to look at it and I like to uh, break it down a little bit here. So we're just going to look at a short passage that I'm going to read. And it says, Worn from his battle to quiet the ferocious bite of as failing conscience Dakar slumped on a footstool knees drawn up and fingers shoved through the bristle of hair at his temples for all his care he felt nagged by failure those bindings i set may not hold he warned kale his voice seemed unreal like scratches on glass to which rain burst in tireless applause. Kale shifted his stance by the doorway, his reflexes set on flinching edge by the laughter which burgeoned downstairs. Each racketing burst from the tap room stewed louder, more shrill, touched to a raw pulse of hysteria. You're thinking we do best to ride out at once. Okay, so... Looking at that paragraph, um, we can see that if you couldn't tell already, I can give you a little setup. These characters, um, Dakar and Kale, they are in a tense situation um, where their charge, Arathon, has just possibly given them away with a um, performance in a bar as as in a tavern as a bard, and so. They are very tense. They are very, um, you know, on edge. And so they're in a situation where this is, you know, chapter five in the book. And, it, and it, you would think that this, by this point in the book, it would things would start to slow down because there's been a lot of action in the first three or four chapters. And you'd think things start to slow down. But the tenseness of their situation does not let up on us. Um, and it's and it's shown in the individual words chosen to um, bring forth this this uh, this dress that the characters are under. Um, the very first word in here is worn uh, from his battle to quiet the ferocious bite of the conscience. Excuse my my uh, pronunciation of names. I'm not very good at that. Uh, but you have. Uh, Dakar, Dakar slumped on a footstool, knees drawn up, and fingers shoved through the bristle of hair at his temple. So, right there, these these words, this worn, that's a stressful word. Battle, of course, is is always stressful, and ferocious bite of conscious. Um, that is, uh, you know, all terms that denote uh, a stressful state of being. Um, and he's in his, his posture is mentioned. He's, he's slumping. He's got his knees drawn up. He's got his fingers shoved through his hair at his temple. So he, it's a very, you know, that's a very stressful posture. It's a, it's a, it's a, not a relaxing pose. And his feelings are he's nagged by failure. And so what happens when we're nagged by failure? We feel stressed out. We feel tense and he warns his companion there that um he set some these are magical bindings that he set on uh on his uh friend and um so he warns they may not hold so that's something else he's worried about and when you're worried your voice seems unreal it seems like something else like you're not even really talking like it's not you you're outside of yourself and it feels in this case to Dakar like scratches on glass to which rain burst in tireless applause so you have the scratches you have tireless 
and applause, it gives you the sense that there's this constant buzz of noise going on in your head as you're stressed out about the situation. Um, and even his companion is taken off guard by, by what he says. Kale shifted his stance, so he's shifting. That means he's not comfortable in, in, in how he's standing. And his reflex is set on flinching edge, not just edge, but actually flinching where he's going to jump suddenly, you know. And he jumps at the laughter, which burgeons downstairs so this you know he's in they're in a tavern and there's laughter going on downstairs but it's not a happy occasion at all it's it's uh it's actually setting these characters on edge it's not it's not a, a good sound as it would be to most people usually laughter is a happy thing uh but not in this case as each racketing burst from the tap room stewed louder shrill touched to a raw pulse of hysteria. I mean, that is not um, your normal reaction to something that other people are having a good time in there. It's supposed to be a happy thing. And so all this stress and all this, um, all this, uh, you know, tenseness is something that people would normally want to get away from. And so the last line in this passage here is perfect. You're thinking we do best to ride out at once. That indicates a need to get away, to get away from this situation, this stressful situation. And uh, so all of that was just beautifully put down by Janie Wirtz in order to um, convey this, this, this situation, which... There's no immediate danger, but it's a danger that is set into the characters that they feel. And she conveys what they're feeling and conveys the stress they feel through her word choice. That's just, um, it, it, it made the reading tense, even though it wasn't an action sequence, so to speak. The reading was still still tense enough to uh really just keep you engaged and wanting to read more and so that is uh my look at reading the prose number 11 and so if you like that please like and subscribe below and um be good to each other thank you